It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson, only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. Good morning and welcome to City Beat. My guest this morning is Mayor Dennis Fenske. It's been a few weeks. Welcome back. Good morning. So tonight is the public hearing for the financial plan. It's one of the biggest things happening this week. What time is it taking place and where? Uh, it happens at 7 o'clock at City Hall, upstairs in the council chambers. Uh, everybody's welcome, and the information is online at thompson.ca in regards to the uh, the budget. Uh, there'll be a formal presentation. This is a public hearing, uh, so there's a process to be followed within that. Uh, so bring your questions, um, and the council is there to listen. Uh, we are not to offer an opinion one way or the other. We can clarify a question's asked. Our, our uh, opportunity to debate is... Uh, during the regular council meeting when it comes for second and third reading. Why is this so important of a meeting and for the public to come out to this? I know it is mandated by the province that you have to have the public hearing, but why is it important to have one even if it wasn't mandated? Well, I, I think it's really important for the community at large to understand uh, what their tax bill is about, uh, both uh, provincial or, uh, from the uh, city's perspective and the school district. I would hope that people would also attend the, uh, the school district meetings as they happened in the past in regards to their budget deliberations, but it's, it's about uh, community engagement, about uh, finding out uh, the details of your, uh, of your tax bill and uh, finding out where the money's being spent. To wrap things up, our, no, sorry, to wrap up our chat on the financial plan, I took a look at the it, and it can be quite confusing to look at. What can the public expect from this year's budget? Well, the, you're right. The, the document that, that uh, we submit to the province uh, can be a little bit uh, confusing. We try to simplify that uh, through a PowerPoint presentation that we're making to this evening. Um, and so we've, we've pulled out the, the body of the, uh, of the budget, broken it down by section, uh, showing through, uh, through graphs and pictorials uh, of what the specific impacts are. So our presentation tonight is, is very much uh, more user-friendly as opposed to the document that's formally submitted to the province, but uh, both the presentation and the document will be avail are, will, are available on Thompson.ca. Moving along, some things that are going to be a part of the budget. One of them is the new one-stop drop facility that the city is hoping to build. What is that? Councillor Smook said it's a long time coming and she seemed very much in support of it. What is it and why is it important? Well, basically it's an environmental initiative in the sense of uh, a one-stop shop at the landfill uh, for various items that, uh, for instance, the, uh, the uh, uh, materials like paint and oils and that used to be just once a year, one weekend for collections. Uh, now we'll have a one-stop shop where people can drop that kind of material off year-round. Uh, it, it'll be more efficient and uh, hopefully encourage people to, uh, to use the one-stop shop as opposed to uh, using the landfill itself or, uh, unfortunately, dumping it in the general area around Thompson. There's money coming from the province. We, uh, sorry, the city received a letter from Minister Eileen Clark with regards to approval for funding for the clean from the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund. It was said that that's just a formality. Why is that? Uh, yeah, it's, so just a, it's a matter of uh, the we had it on the on the. Uh, 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 council re or council agenda prior to the budget being released and so just for information purposes we had to pull it off until the provincial budget was announced and then uh, this letter can be uh, can be made public and that's that's why it's coming forward now it's a housekeeping perspective and what's the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars going towards uh, various uh, projects uh, with, within uh, the city's budget we will outline tonight uh, where that those are offset uh, in regards to the line items a few of the things that the bud, that city's budget, sorry, is going towards is two new pickup trucks and a new garbage truck. Why do we need them? What are they going towards? And why does the city new, need a new garbage truck? As it's not exactly a cheap acquisition. Yeah, so that's a good point. Uh, and and basically, from the uh, the small fleet and the large equipment, uh, such as the garbage truck or loaders or fire trucks, uh, we have an equipment reserve, and each piece of equipment we have uh, has a life cycle. And so once you get to the end of that life cycle, it's it's more efficient to replace the piece of equipment rather than to continue to maintain it. And so that's the reason that uh, these pieces have, have come up through the, the five-year plan that we have for capital acquisitions to, uh, they're at the end of their life cycle and are due to be replaced. We draw from the equipment reserve that we annually contribute to, uh, to pay for these uh, uh, pieces of equipment that allow our workforce to continue to do their jobs. Now at the last council meeting, Councillor Ellis, who's the chair of the Public Safety Committee, presented the report for the first quarter of 2017. 
and it saw an increase of 6.63% in ambulance calls from the same period last year. Is there any specific reason for the increase, and does that have any impact on the services? Uh, well, I mean, it certainly has impact on the services on the number of calls uh, per month, uh, and it, it depends. It's seasonal. It could be weather-related. weather, weather related. Uh, Definitely it's health-related, obviously, because an ambulance has been called. Uh, so as we age in population, uh, there may be more requirements from that perspective. So uh, I think it's uh, not not a, an abnormal situation to see where there's an increase in certain costs or a certain uh, uh, travel of, of the ambulances. So um, not to be surprised, but uh, it's just it's variable from year to year, month to month. Uh, some of it's weather dependent, some of it's health related. Uh, so it's tough to predict what uh, what the increases are. One of the other things that were brought forward during that report was a report on the cold weather policy. It said 61 people used the facility during the 20 times that the cold that it was activated for February and March. Are you happy with the number of people getting off the street during those times when it's activated? Absolutely. That, that That's uh, an initiative that was started a number of years back in regards to utilizing the uh, facilities at the outdoor rinks uh, that aren't used from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. And so... Uh, uh, historically, we went through some uh, pretty significant losses in the sense of people being exposed to cold weather uh, and the elements. And so when we implemented this, uh, we saw a drastic uh, decrease in the uh, the medical attendance to people who have been exposed to, uh, uh, to cold weather. So uh, it's a good uh, project. And we actually have been modeled by other communities uh, that... Uh, haven't used their facilities to that extent and so we've seen cold weather policies implemented in other communities because of what we do. And do you think there could be anything done either by the city or by any local organizations to encourage more people to use the facilities rather than to try and endure the harsh weather? Well, I, that, that's just a, a basically a, a one-off in the sense of depending on the weather, we have the, the, uh, the shelter to start with. They have a certain number of beds. Uh, once they hit that limit, then we kick into the, uh, to the cold weather policy. And so it, it's well known amongst the, the uh, population that utilize those facilities that that's the process. Uh, and we, we're in, encouraged to see that people are taking advantage of it rather than trying to uh, seek uh, other shelters that not, may not be as good uh, as we have. On to another topic that hopefully this is the last time we bring up here on City Beat. After you recused yourself from the Grant Lou negotiating team because it was becoming too much of a headache at council, has there been any discussion about a replacement for you on that team? Uh, yeah, th this Monday we have a, uh, the agenda is, is set and there's a resolution uh, for the replacement. Uh, we currently have Deputy Mayor Valentino and, and Councillor Byer on the uh, on the committee. And so uh, Council will bring forward a, a resolution to uh, replace my position with, uh, with another Councillor. And then finally, on Saturday, it's Earth Day. Is there anything going on in the city, any city-sponsored events or just general tips for keep making the earth a greener place to live? Well, nothing's particular for the city of Thompson, but in general terms, I mean, it's the responsibility of each and every one of us uh, to be responsible for for our, our well-being and the well-being of the earth in regards to from an environmental perspective. So I would encourage everyone to, to do whatever you can to uh, reduce your carbon footprint, to uh, recycle and reuse, and just to promote the, the sustainability uh, of our great city and, and country and, and, uh, and the planet. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Thompson Today. Thanks again to my guest, Mayor Dennis Fenske. If you have a question you'd like to answer next week, email it in advance to chtmnews at arcticradio.ca. For 1029 CHTM, I'm Stuart Walter.